The Google Pixel Buds Pro 2 are a dramatic improvement from the first generation. But does that mean that they're finally competitive in this crowded true wireless market? Let's do a full DHRME style review. Namaste, we're DHRME. Dramatic headphones really matter in ear. The most improved thing for me from the first generation is the size of the Google Pixel Buds Pro 2. It is very cool in the ear and the colors that they have, usually we don't mention colors so much but i think they have really good fun colors we have the pink here not sure why google sent this one out to us but it really is a statement it is a clear look in the year so choose the right color because it is going to be part of your entire look also because of how they look the circular shape is very unique and very really cool and friendly looking i'd say i guess that's the look that google is also going for and among all these buds the sea of stem shaped airpods lookalikes and you know the other bud style or button style earbuds this one looks unique so the circular shape is not just form it's also function it serves as touch controls and i must say the touch controls are super responsive it has a unique volume gesture as well where you swipe forward or backward for volume very very cool and not something i've seen in other birds at least the volume gesture Apart from that, you get single tap for play pause, double tap for the next track, triple tap for the previous track, and the press and hold is also there and it's the only one customizable in the app. But the good part is they're responsive and very, very easy to trigger, but not in a bad way. So I was very happy with using these, but of course the downside is these are touch controls, so you're gonna have problems with gloves and things like that. There are no buttons here. Then the IP rating. There's IP54 on the buds, so a very strong rating for dust and water resistance. But what's more interesting is that the case also has an IP rating, it's IPX4. So a little bit of rain and sweat will not be a problem for the case too. ANC and transparency felt good, but the ANC definitely gave a pressure feeling in my ear. Okay, how does the ANC perform? Okay, before that, the app is very simple. You get ANC, transparency, and ANC off. That's it, no sliders, no adjusting, no focus on voice, nothing like that. And you know what, we can dig it three simple modes and you get that ANC off mode like I said a lot of buds nowadays don't offer that. Let's start with the performance of ANC. We thought it was very very good. Uh, it is not quite tier S so not quite the AirPods Pro 2 category but a little bit lower than that which is why we put in tier A. In fact we thought it was slightly better than the Earphone Air Pro 4 which are also very good buds for ANC and punch way above the price class. Um, but it, the Google Pixel Buds Pro 2 was slightly better than that. There is a little bit of white noise, but it's not too bad. Then there is the transparency mode and the transparency is also very good. In fact, it is tier S. I thought it was as good as having nothing in my ears. Well, the low end is suppressed a little bit. So if you are in a bus or a plane, you will hear less of that in a transparency mode. But other than that, it's identical to having nothing in here, very good mids and highs, and no unnecessary sparkle or things like that. So very impressed with the transparency mode as well, tier S. All right, let's talk about wind noise cancelling for a second here because I've been out here biking and stuff like that. It's very interesting what the Google Pixel is doing in transparency mode. As soon as it feels there's some wind, it kind of ramps down the transparency so you don't hear the wind to your earbuds but you're still kind of aware of your surroundings. So you won't get like full transparency on all the time, but it does do a good job of avoiding that wind noise. You'll be kind of aware of your surroundings. And that switch between transparency, you know, being uh, ramped down is very fast. As soon as the wind disappears, you're back to full transparency. So that's a really nice feature for wind reduction on these buds, because if you're out and about cycling like we do here, you're gonna have to deal with that. Now, I really like the find my feature on these buds. Usually we don't talk about these much, but this is very much an Apple AirTag-esque feature in that sense. It is GPS based and you also have a speaker on the case, which is an upgrade from the first generation, which means when you actually do the find my buds, not only will it hopefully find your buds on a map in a location, but it will also start ringing those buds and then you'll be able to hear where your case is. So that's kind of cool. An interesting observation that I had was because I also daily drive a Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, which is an Android phone. I was getting a following error when I had the Google Pixel Buds Pro 2 with me, much like AirTags to notify you that some buds are near you and then you can choose to do with that what you will. So you can't use this for 
you know, following human beings, <laughs> put their buds in somebody else's, you know, bag or whatever and hope to track them because it will notify them, which is a very nice safety feature. Some of the smart features you get is Gemini AI, of course. So I've been trying to figure out what so special about, you know, Gemini Live and the Pixel Buds Pro and it kind of escapes me because all it's doing is you can configure one of the touch uh, press and hold things. So I've used my right one and I press it down, it triggers Gemini. And if I have Gemini advanced, I can say something like, let's talk live. And there you go. Um, can you tell me something about the S24 Ultra? So what's unique about the Pixel Buds? I don't understand. Any Buds should be able to do this. All you're doing is you're pressing and holding and then it triggers your assistant. And of course you have notification access, but a ton of other Buds have that as well. The Sony, for example, has that. And it's not even specific to your Google Pixel phones. Like you saw, I just did that on a Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. So it does seem like the Pixel Buds itself have nothing to do with Gemini. Correct me if I'm wrong here. It's just a way of triggering your a new assistant on your phone. You should be able to do this with any other bud. So we won't go further with what Gemini can do, etc. That's a whole other video. Comment if you want to hear about that. But as far as these buds are concerned, yes, you can trigger a digital assistant, which could be Google, which could be Gemini. And if you has something to do with it, maybe any other assistant. So it's not clear to me what is so special about the Buds Pro 2 when it comes to AI, specifically the AI with Gemini. Then the extra features. There's classic Bluetooth multipoint, so you can stay connected to two devices, but there's also audio switch, meaning that the Buds can automatically switch between phones that are logged into the same Google account. There's also an in-ear sensor, so taking a Bud out will pause audio automatically and resume when you put it back in. And there's conversation detection, which we've seen on the likes of AirPods and we've seen with Sony as well, where the buds will detect that you're trying to speak, it'll kick in transparency mode and reduce the music volume. And there's also hearing wellness, which shows the current levels and volume exposure accumulated over the last 24 hours and seven days. This is good stuff because cumulative exposure is what damages your ears. There's also volume level notifications if the limit is exceeded. You also get spatial audio with head tracking. In the box, you get four sizes of tips, so we're happy to see that. Let's talk about comfort and fit because I think, as I said, the biggest upgrade is the design and this fit. I have not used earbuds like these, I think, ever because the shape is very unique, but still they fit excellently. Have They have this they have this hard kind of rubber uh, ear tip thing that supports in the inside of your concha and the ear tips are small, they're round, but they seal very, very well. And Google says there's two ways to wear these earbuds. You twist them clockwise to tighten and untwist them counterclockwise for a relaxed fit, which is what some people prefer. They don't like to be like, you know, very plugged in, but of course, Tightening them will give you the best sound experience. We'll come to sound in a bit and ANC performance. But if you're just inside and you're not really listening to music very critically and you can untwist them, relax and use them in that way for longer periods of time. Not something I've ever seen on earbuds before. Interesting concept. In real life, I'm not sure how often I would use this simply because when I untwist them, they become quite loose and I'm more afraid that they might fall off, but I can see myself doing that at a desk, you know, kind of like taking your shoes off to relax a little bit. It's that kind of vibe that I'm getting with this. Let's talk phone calls. Google's marketing was very promising, especially with Bluetooth super wideband, clear calling, voice accelerometer, wind blocking mesh covers, but how did it actually perform? On the Samsung S24 Ultra, the mics have a weird after voice that follows you in noisy conditions. Obstacle. Ice, 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 go. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. And there's aggressive noise suppression leading to quiet speech being drowned out. Obstacle. Ice, ice, go. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. In windy conditions, it's even more aggressive with cutting out noise. Let's go. Pop, pop, obstacle. Ice, 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 go. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. The quieter parts were almost completely gone. Pop, pop, 
Eyes, eyes, eyes. Test, test, test. And testing the mics on the buds while paired to a Pixel phone, there was no discernible difference, with the difference in conditions probably accounting for a slightly worse performance. Oh, oh, oh. Ice, 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 go. Test, test, test. One, two, three. Pass, 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 ice, 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 go. Test, test, test. One, two, three. And what does the Fakman get in terms of controls? You can only answer hang up and reject calls. That's it. No volume, no mute. Overall, these buds are a bit disappointing in slightly challenging conditions. It's incredible to me that voice calling is so hard for a company of Google's resources and all the training data that they have to clear up voices. Let's talk about the battery and charging situation. You get wireless charging on the charging case, so that's great. There's also fast charging of the earbuds, so popping the earbuds in the charging case for five minutes will deliver up to one and a half hours of listening time with active noise cancellation off. The battery life is advertised at eight hours with ANC on. We tested that number and we got eight hours and seven minutes with ANC on. So it pretty much checks out. What are some of the things to mention in terms of connectivity and codecs? Well, these buds come with Bluetooth 5.4, there's LE audio and super wideband. Let's talk about sound. Now, these buds, how do I say this? They're interesting sound-wise because they sound very good. The hardware is decent, but there are clearly two different kinds of sounds here with ANC off and ANC on. As you see on screen, they're not only slightly different, where like just the bass is bumped or whatever, they are considerably different. And with ANC on, it's kind of a strange choice and not in a bad way because it's kind of flat in the bass and it has an elevated lower treble and or higher mid range that almost reminded me of some audiophile tunings very moondrop esque and i was actually just comparing them to the moondrop clinical dust 2 tuning wise so interesting vocals acoustic guitars come across much more clearer in this tuning However, with ANC off, it's a completely different story, much closer to what one would consider a popular sound to be. It's a bit muddier on the low end, more bass, low end, but with a warmer sound. So not as much of the mid or even the sharper high end sounds, which actually makes that kind of ideal for listening to at longer periods of time, it's less fatiguing. However, I'll say one thing, none of these two are S tier for sound and the bass boost does help a bit with ANC on if that's your speed. Now the fact that these support the AAC codec makes it that these won't give you the highest resolution that the higher end earbuds will give you. There's also a five band EQ in the app and that'll make you happy till you open the app. These aren't literally frequency sliders but in a very googly way there are simpler names like upper treble, treble, mid. Luckily for you guys, we tested and measured these with ANC on to see what they actually mean. And this is what they corresponded to. Now, this is the area that the upper treble slider changes. So the lowest point is at zero and the highest point is at max. This is the treble slider. This is what the mid slider does from zero to max. This is the bass slider and this is the lower bass slider. Yeah, this ain't great if you're accurately tuning frequencies. I mean, this is Google. Maybe they did the research and this is what makes sense to some users and consumers, just not to me. Before we wrap up guys, a quick disclosure. Google did send out the Pixel phone and the Pixel Buds to us for review purposes. But this is an independent review of the Pixel Buds Pro 2. And we can stay independent also thanks to you guys, our lovely patrons and YouTube members. And a special shout out goes out to our Fuckman tier as always, because they're our top tier, Gamma Panda and Paula. Thank you guys very, very much. All right, so where does that leave us? I'm seriously impressed with what Google has been able to achieve with their new hardware. It's really comfortable, compact, they've miniaturized the components. It's very well done on the hardware department. There is a lot of smarts with all the Gemini stuff happening there. However, despite the hardware and all those smarts delivering much clearer sound, Google is playing in a very expensive market, about $250. You can get some excellent earbuds at that price. Sony, Jabra, Techniques, Bose, very, very good contenders at that price. That's not even counting the Edifier, One More, Soundcore, you know, the lower budget brands or Tozo, you know, there's so many choices out there. So Google has to realize that you're paying the Google tax here just to get that Gemini bit, especially, especially 
because even though the hardware is delivering much clearer sound this time around, some of the design choices around sound are super questionable. You've been questioning what AI has to do with earbuds, and we've been DHRME. Dooey. <laughs>